Welcome guys to part 6 of the EM Facts for the Board series and once again I am Sajad Pathan and we are going to look at some more ophthalmological emergencies in this video. For those who have not subscribed yet please hit the subscribe button and please share these videos with your friends at work. Let's begin this talk with a clinical scenario over here. It's about an 8 day old boy who's in the emergency department with a swelling around the eye. His mother complains of a sticky discharge coming from the eyelid and the swelling is painful. He has been seen by the GP seven days back with a viral sore throat. While you examine him, he is stable but you can see a constant clear watery discharge from his left eye. His vision is normal and eye movements are also normal. What is the most likely diagnosis? What could be a complication and what would be the treatment? You can pause the video over here and take your time to think about these answers and as we go along you will we will look at the answers. So let's begin uh, with uh, decryo cystitis. In my last video if you haven't watched click here and watch about the lacrimal apparatus. Uh, so the lacrimal apparatus consists of the lacrimal gland which produces the tears comes to the punctum drained by the canaliculi and the lacrimal sac and then through the nasolacrimal duct in the inferior meatus of the nose. So decryocystitis is an inflammation of the lacrimal sac. You will see a swelling and erythema around the medial canthus of the eye or the uh, upper part of the nose. It usually follows streptococcal pharyngitis commonly seen in the young infants and neonates where the nasolacrimal duct is not patent and uh, it can be seen as well as at the age of 40 plus. The organisms implicated, one pearl I will give you guys over here, most of the organisms if you think of bacterial causes for any maxillofacial problems think of staph aureus, strep pneumonia and haemophilus influenza. The treatment wise treatment would be to cover these organisms. So oral coamoxiclav is quite good you can ask the patient to do gentle massage on the medial canthus of the eye and warm compressors they do help. Complications wise it can lead to something called as preceptal cellulitis. We'll talk about the preceptal and orbital cellulitis as we go along at the end. Let's look at two other swellings seen around the eyelid. Uh, you must have heard about hodiolums, hodiolum external internal and chalazion. You quite get confused with what is what. Remember one thing, external hodiolum is an acute inflammation of the gland of Z's or gland of mole. Uh, whereas the internal hodiolum is again an acute inflammation of the meibomian glands. Once this acute inflammation subsides, then if the meibomian ducts are blocked, it leads to a chronic swelling which is hard, non-tender, and that is called as chalazion. Does external hodiolum go into becoming chalazion? Rarely, but it can. However, the meibomian glands go quite deep. Therefore, they are a little bit away from the lid margin and they can go into chronic inflammation. As said, hodiolum is an acute one. Chalazion is a chronic one. So in acute, you will have tenderness, you will have pus, you will have swelling, which is red and warm whereas a chalazion is non-tender and hard, non-fluctuant. So, in acute hodiolum, external or internal, the most common organism implicated is staph aureus. What are the risk factors to develop this hodiolum? The risk factor is blepharitis. You can see recurrent hodiolum, for recurrent hodiolum in certain group of patients, those who have seborrheic dermatitis or a lot of dandruff of the eye, or a uh, lice infestation of the eyelid can give rise to these ties. Having a good eye hygiene is essential to manage these conditions. So are you going to prescribe some antibiotics? No. What you're going to do is you're going to tell them to have warm compress. It will resolve by itself. And if it is recurrent, treat the underlying cause, treat the lice, treat the uh, dermatitis, the seborrhea uh, with uh, some shampoo and uh, eye hygiene will be mandatory. For the chalazion, what you're going to do is you're going to ask them to do warm compress eye hygiene again but if it is recurrent or if it is causing a reduced visual equity um, you may want to refer it to the ophthalmology. You may want to prescribe topical antibiotics like erythromycin or bacitracin. 
this is a short uh, uh, cartoonic representation of the Hodiolum and Calazion. I've taken it from medcomic.com uh, and if you Google it, you'll find it across. What do you see in this image? You see a child with eye swelling. Both the eyes are swollen and if you open Rosen's or Tintinale and if you look at the differentials of the eye swelling, there are quite a lot. It can be as simple as conjunctivitis to something which can be as worst as uh, nephrotic syndrome, congestive uh, heart failure. Uh, you may see it in angioedema, anaphylaxis. So these are the systemic conditions. But what, where I'm taking you over here is in the ophthalmic emergencies to something we call it as uh, preceptal and orbital cellulitis. Let's see another question over here. 29 year old female is in the emergency department with left eye swelling. She recently had an upper respiratory tract infection. Her observations are stable. She has no comorbidities. Her visual acuity is normal, although she has to hold her eyelids open passively with her hands. What is your diagnosis? How do you manage this condition? What are the organisms implicated? What is the most likely complication that can happen? Guys, for that matter, for the matter of examinations, always think the worst. In the exam, if somebody, come, somebody comes with an eyelid swelling, it is orbital cellulitis, unless and until it's proven otherwise. But in your clinical practice, make a clinical diagnosis. It may be very easy to differentiate between what is preceptal versus septal. But in order to diagnose that, you need to have an understanding of what do I mean by septal. So, a septum, if you look at the anatomy, if you look at the anatomy, the septum is a thin fascia which arises from the periosteum and goes to the tarsal plate and it separates the orbicularis oculi muscle from the eye itself. So anterior to the septum is your skin subcutaneous tissue orbicularis oculi and then comes the septum and then you have the extraocular muscles, the orbit in itself and the fat pad and other stuff. So any inflammation in front of the septum is preceptal and inflammation to the back of the septum is orbital cellulitis. Orbital cellulitis is bad, preceptal cellulitis could be managed conservatively. Let us look at each of these in detail. Both of these conditions can present with an eye swelling, but an orbital cellulitis will have painful eye movements or a complete ophthalmoplegia. If you open the eye, the eye is involved, so the conjunctiva will be red, it may be edematous. The visual acuity will be reduced because the eye is involved and if the optic nerve is involved, you will get red desaturation. What I mean by that is they cannot appreciate the red color as it is. They might say, I see a shade of red which is pink or an orange. What you need to do is you need to get a CT scan. You need to do an ophthalm referral. In the meantime, IV access, IV antibiotics to cover for the organisms which are implicated. Look at your antibiotic guidelines in the trust. This may need surgical drainage as well. Let us revisit the question we saw about the eight year old child with a swelling and you must have got the diagnosis right as an acute decryocystitis. It's at the medial canthus of the eye where the lacrimal sac is. So it is acute decryocystitis. How do I know that? He had a recent upper respiratory tract infection, usually a strep sore throat likely. And uh, if you see the child is stable, it's not an orbital cellulitis because it's restricted to one area of the eyelid. And uh, what could be the complication? As we discussed, the infection can spread and give rise to preceptal cellulitis. What would be the treatment? Warm compresses, gentle massage, and that should take care of the problem. Let us look at the next question, the 29 year old woman who had come with the eyelid swelling. So what is your diagnosis? If you look at it, the visual acuity is normal. She has no comorbidities. She is able to hold her eyelid open passively. I think this is the diagno this diagnosis is of preceptal cellulitis. However, if there was ophthalmoplegia, reduced visual acuity, red desaturation, painful eye movements, then I would have considered a diagnosis of orbital cellulitis. How do you manage this condition? This condition can be managed by giving oral antibiotics if she is well enough. 
If not, then you consider IV antibiotic. The antibiotic should cover staph aureus, streptococcus pneumonia, and hemophilus influenza. So what is the most likely complication that can happen? If it's a preceptal cellulitis, it can lead to orbital cellulitis. If it is an orbital cellulitis, it can lead to many other things. Osteomyelitis of the orbit, it can lead to complete blindness, it can lead to septicemia, it can lead to multiple other things. It can even spread up to the meninges and cause meningitis. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I would request you to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, share this video across to your friends and I shall see you soon in my next video. Till then, peace.